Howdy, this is Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game LLC here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Today we're going to be organizing Root, a game of woodland might and right, designed by Cole Worley and published by Leader Games. This is a fully sleeved copy of the game that's organized to get gameplay started as soon as possible. It also implements all of the content all the way up to the new Marauders expansion and the Hirelings. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure that you do. It is the best way to help us grow. Let's get started organizing Root. Before we begin, I do want to quickly mention the playmats for the game. We actually just store them in their original packaging. I find that they work really well for determining which one is the base game mat and which one is the mountain and lake playmat. So keep them in their boxes here. The second thing I want to talk about is which boxes we use to store the components. We store all of your hireling components in the hireling box here, and then we store all of the clockwork components in the clockwork expansion box. You can use either of the clockwork expansion boxes, but I really like the artwork on the clockwork expansion too. We'll talk about these more in depth and their contents later in the video. And the last thing I want to talk about is this combined box that we're using for the base game here. We've actually taken the top of one of the expansion boxes, this one's from the Underworld expansion, and then the base game box from Root here, and stacked them on top of each other so they create one large box with more space to store everything while still retaining that sturdy storage. In addition to giving support and more room in your main Root box, we actually store some things in this bottom section, and let's start off with what's under there. Let's lift off this main Root box, and underneath you'll see that we have all of our paper components that are going to be redundant. Starting off with our laws of root, as well as our older guides from the past expansions for learning to play. These are helpful when you are just learning that base game, and I find having extra copies of the law of root around helpful if you want to give each player a copy so they can reference the sequence for their different factions, or they have some specific rules questions. So you have them in here just in case. Underneath that, you have the trick or treat scenario. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can print this out for yourself, but it offers a new way to play the game. We keep it in here because we don't play with it very often. And the last components that are in here are your game boards. So if you decide not to bring the play mats with you, or if you're just feeling like using those game boards, they're in here for your use. But that's everything in this bottom section here. Let's go ahead and pack it up so that the rest of our system is nice and sturdy. First off, let's put in those cardboard game boards, our Halloween scenario, and then our learn to play guides and our extra copies of the Law of Root. You'll place the core box on top of that to keep it nice and secure. And now it's time to dive into the main box. We lift the lid off here, and inside you'll see that we have the new Learn to Play guide, as well as the up-to-date Law of Root. That brings us to all of our faction boards. Just push into the bottom right corner here, and you should be able to lift all of the different boards. This includes the new Keepers and Irons and the Lord of the Hundreds, as well as all of your updated faction boards. Just stack those on the top in one large pile. In our main section of the box here, we have two distinct areas, one with all of our faction components and then with all of our generic components. So first off, let's start off with the faction specific components. We have our new Keepers in Iron, our new Lord of the Hundreds, and notice they don't have any special bags or anything. That's because none of the geek up sets are out. Just simply place all of their non-card components in one bag and toss it to the player that's playing that specific faction. We've gone ahead and upgraded all of our other factions with their own specific geek up bags, but you can simply just use a plastic bag for all of these. We'll go ahead and move out all of these faction bags to the right here. The last drawstring bag in here is an opaque generic bag, and this is going to contain all of your resin markers. This is so that you can randomize your setup during each game by putting these markers in here and just pulling them for each of the different locations. That way you don't have any tokens that you have to shuffle face down or anything like that. I'll leave a link in the description below for all the things I talk about here, including generic bags like these. So those are our faction specific components as well as the resin clearing markers. Let's talk about some of the more generic components you'll be using each game. First off, we have all of our different landmark pieces. If you're deciding to play with a landmark variant, you'll shuffle up the cards and then pull out the appropriate pieces that you'll need from this bag here. Just put that into the corner. Underneath that bag, you'll have all of your components that you'll need for every game, including two sets of battle dice, all of your items for the different ruins, as well as the ruins pieces. You'll just simply dump these onto the board and allocate them appropriately. You've got some silica gel packets in here for freshness, and then you have all of your card holders here for the different players. And that brings us to all of the game's different cards. We sleeve all of our standard size cards in the Ultra Pro Deck Protector sleeves, pro matte. I really like the way that they shuffle, they reduce the glare with their matte finish, and I love the way that they handle. I'll leave links in the description below for the sleeves that we use for this game. The reason that we keep all of our cards in this section here, as opposed to putting them in the bags, is when you remove the cards, the bags become a lot more malleable. You can shape them as you need in order to fill up the space here and store everything nicely for the factions in this area. And then you can simply file and pick out the card that you need. You're not going to risk damaging any of your cards if you store them all like so. Just like the faction components, you're only going to take out 
out what you need here. Starting off with our different landmark cards here, you have all of your landmark rules, as well as you can randomize which landmarks appear in each game. Very cool. Love these new additions. Our next set of cards are the two communal decks. We have our standard core game deck, as well as the exile and partisans decks. They're going to be separated, and you can put them back in front here, so you can clearly tell which is which, but they're also signified by the backs here. Go ahead and play whichever deck you see fit. We then have all of your advanced setup cards, if you're deciding to play with that variant. And finishing up with all of your faction-specific cards, including your overview cards and then any additional components that each of the characters may need. That's all just in that upper right corner. So that's everything that's stored in this core game box. Let's go ahead and pack it up. Let's start off with all of our cards in the upper right section here. All of our card holders in this bottom section, and then our two silica gel packets. Our every game components and our landmarks. All of our faction pieces. Including our new factions and then our generic bag with our resin clearing markers in it. We'll place all of our faction boards on top, our up-to-date Law of Root and our Learn to Play guide, and that's everything in our core box for Root. Up next, we'll talk about the Hireling box, and as you expected, it's going to have all your components required to play with the Hirelings. On top of everything, you'll have your Hireling rulebook as well as your different Hireling cards. And underneath that, you'll have the Advanced Setup Aid. This will tell you when you're actually supposed to be dealing the Hirelings, choosing your setup order, and then actually setting up your factions. So it's good to make sure you follow this. It'll help you with getting your games going pretty quickly. To sleeve our hirelings, we use the tarot-sized Arcane Tinman board game sleeves. I love that they have a non-glare matte finish on them that makes shuffling a breeze for randomizing those hirelings. Once again, leave a link in the description below so that you can get sleeves for yourself. Our hireling markers, control markers, and hireling die are all stored in one of these small containers here that we got from the Dollar Tree. They're 10 for a dollar. I love the way that the caps come off, and you can store them under like so. You've got all of your different pieces that you'll put onto that scoreboard, as well as the die that you roll to give out the control markers. Go ahead and put these in a central location if you decide to play with the hireling expansion. And that brings us to our individually bagged hireling components. I'm only going to talk about those hirelings that have extra pieces included, and I'll skip out on the rest. The first one here is a bag that's actually a combination of three hirelings. You have this deer one, the otter one, and then this big old bear. Make sure that you put all of your club tokens with the bear here. But we've kept these in here because a lot of them are just a single piece, except for that bear who has those additional tokens. The rabbit scouts will have this extra green die stored with them. The sunward expedition will have these foothold tokens with them. The vault keepers will have their vault tokens tokens stored with them, and the rest of the hirelings you'll just store with their light colored pieces. And of course, a silica gel packet for freshness. So that's everything in the hireling box. Let's go ahead and pack it up. We'll toss in our silica gel packet as well as all of your different hirelings, and they'll just kind of scatter on the bottom here, keeping everything nice and flat. We'll put our rule book and our hireling cards in this upper right, and then our Dollar Tree container holding your hireling markers, your control tokens, and your hireling die. And that's everything in the hireling box. That brings us to our last box, the Clockwork Expansions. Let's lift off the lid here, and inside you'll see that we have all of the boards and the Law of Robotics on top. Just like the core box, you'll push that corner and it should pop up all of those boards so you can easily remove them. So you got that Law of Robotics and then all of your different mechanized factions here, including the new Logical Lizards and Riverfolk Robots, the Drillbit Dutchie, and of course, the Cogwheel Corvids. So go ahead and put those to the side for now. Underneath that, we have our two sets of cards that have been separated just to make sure that everything fits inside of the box with no lid lift. It also makes it so that you have that space available for you to push in the corner and the boards will pop out. These are all of your new cards that come in the new Clockwork expansion, as well as all of your older cards that came in the original one. You'll have a set of clearing priority markers in a simple plastic bag, and then we have a bag full of your extra markers. These include the cardboard clearing tokens, as well as extra tokens that can be used in future scenarios, and then duplicates of other tokens from other portions of the game. And the last component here is the original Law of Robotics, but I'm just going to leave it in here because we don't really need to take it out as we have that new replacement edition that came in the Clockwork Expansion 2. And that's everything in the Clockwork Expansion box. Let's go ahead and pack it up. First off, let's put all of our extra tokens and our clearing priority tokens in there, followed by our cards from the two Clockwork Expansions. And we'll cover those up with the Law of Robotics as well as our mechanized faction boards. We'll just place those on top like so. And that is organizing all of the Clockwork components for Root. And that is reorganizing all of the content for Root. If you have any questions about what you saw here, please let me know down in the comments below. How do you organize your copy of Root? What do you think of the new hirelings? What's your favorite new faction to play? Have you tried out any of the new Clockwork expansion content? Which is your favorite AI to play against? We'd love to hear what you think. But thank you so much for watching. Side Game Strong.